I'm starting over on the design capture of this ancient Egyptian stool. The first design I did had several flaws, particularly involving the seat shaping. I used a push-pull method when I should have been using a follow-me method. So this time I'm redoing it. I'm using a different picture. Here's the another picture from the British Museum. It's more straight on. And I've been tracing over the shapes here. As you can see, you've got the leg and part of that rail up there, the shape of that. Uh, some of the uh, other parts I've I've traced out. I've I've used a photo match again. I did not bring it in as an image, rather as photo match, thinking I might get a better result here. So uh, I've now got these these shapes represented. I also uh, sized the photo to the actual size before. In their earlier design, I did not know the actual dimensions. Later, I found that documentation, and so this is now the right size. And here's the result of those tracing over steps. And most of these are just faces. They aren't solids yet. Uh, I did start to shape up that leg over on the left a little bit but otherwise uh, this is all the information I need to have to really finalize the the design here and the next step is to then create a seat shape that better represents the original piece and that's what I'm doing in this step here I've got a, a shape over here on the right right here and that's the thickness of the top and then I've got a follow me path that's this top curved edge in the back here so then I can do a follow me with that path and and make a a good representation of the original piece. So in that next uh, slide here, you can see the resulting follow me. These little protruding triangular ends need to be removed so I've created some rectangular cutting planes on both ends here to slice off the uh, waste material and you can see that up here in the finished overall shaping of that top or the seat Now, in the next step, though, that overall shape needs to be sliced up. Well, here it is, the overall piece right on top of the platform here. But I need to slice it up with some rails and some slats. So that's the next step here. And I've used those rectangular cutting planes to cut off the material that's necessary to complete the, end, the front and back rails here. So I've used those cutting planes to slice the seat and now I've got a a piece here that I can attach to the 
other part of the seat rail and make a complete seat rail as shown here. So that component now is complete. It's got the curvature properly shaped and it's also fastened to that front flat face here. And that sits right on top of the leg. There's a protruding tongue on the end of that top edge, top end of that leg that, that goes into sockets. Um, sockets in that rail that hold it all together. And that will be a pinned mortise and tenon joint as was done in the original piece. Now the next stage is to create the slats. So here's the remaining part of the seat shape and it needs to be cut up into six pieces. I've created these rectangular cutting groups. Um, these are solid groups. They're a quarter of an inch thick so in addition to cutting the slats, they also create the groove, the separation, the quarter inch separation between the slats. I, I will use solid tools to do this, but it can be done just with the intersection. That back edge, that back line there was segmented uh, split into six equal parts to position these cutting plates. So solid tools I used uh, split here and the, you don't have to use solid tools. But the way that works, let me just uh, go ahead and do one here. I, I click on one of the pieces and then I click on the other piece and that creates and then I do that again and again and again uh, to create those intersections and what what it ends up looking like then uh, well let me come back here just come back here and if I just pull one of these cutting now you can see what you, you got to slot out of that and you got the groove is another piece result of the uh, tools of the solid tools and then I've got all the slats and here are these slats there's only three unique components so those are uh, just duplicated, copied over to the other three positions and flipped. So now I can remove that old uh, surface, seat surface, and replace with the slats. And I get, and I can all, and then also add all the other components, the spindles and the stretchers. Uh, and some of the joinery, mortise and tenon joinery, is also included. So here you can see the, the six slats with a quarter inch spacing. And those are mortise and tenon into those top rails at the front and back. So this is the new design and it more properly uh, matches the original design.